Okay, I'm going to talk about my latest game. It's actually my first Android game and my very first Java game. So it's a few firsts. My first game on the Play Store. That's another thing. And yeah, so why don't I show the game first and then talk a little bit about the process. So in Android, there's actually, in the Android Studio, there's actually a, a screen capture option to show what's actually on the device, but there seems to be a bug or something with it. It doesn't seem to be working for me, but I'll just load up a desktop version so you can take a look. Uh, okay, so loading screen, whoop. And uh, this is free music. Um, I think this one's by Bart. I think it's called something like 8-Bit Starship or something. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, oh, okay, so it's by, it's by Bart, it's called Through Pixelated Clouds, actually. Uh, and, and yeah, so this, this game is basically Pong, essentially. Uh, I feel like it's like the perfect hello world of making games. Uh, because it basically teaches you almost everything you need to know to make more complex games. It's collision detection, uh, switching scenes, uh, sprites, um, loading assets, um, basically everything. Um, but I kind of got, I had to stop myself because I kind of got carried away by like trying to add new features, learn more about the, the library that I'm using and stuff. But I had to kind of stop myself because I'm actually not all that passionate about the game of Pong. I find it kind of boring. Like you could make a pretty sweet Pong game, but the passion for me isn't there to build one. It's like a game that I might have fun playing if it exists, and it does exist, I imagine. But I don't know if I would actually enjoy making that kind of game. But, so, before I actually go into the gameplay, I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about little things that added just to help me learn a little more about programming. Uh, first of all, why don't I talk about the this guy. So that's the, that's the ball of, of Pong that's going to show up in the game. And you can see there's a little trail of particles coming out behind it. And this is the first time I've ever actually experimented with any kind of a particle system. And I think the great thing about particle systems is that they're actually not a lot of code for some pretty cool effects. Because I didn't actually use any textures or anything like that for this. These are just, uh, just squares that are generated in memory that are converted into textures for the particle emitter. And it, they're actually really simple. It's just for every unit of time you create about you know something like 10 particles in a given space relative to where that ball is and then you just put it on a timer and so that after X amount of milliseconds it shrinks down so if you look in the middle of the tail it's a little smaller than closer to the head and then after a little more time they shrink even more so you kinda get this uh, trail effect where it looks like they're disintegrating uh, and then after a certain more time after that you just delete them so that that's why um, yeah and what's interesting is that it actually gives an effect of the particles bouncing off the off the sides, but that's actually totally an illusion because there is no actual collision detection with these particles. The particles don't know where the sides of the screen is. They just it's just an illusion of how they're created and destroyed. But yeah, honestly, not a lot of code, and I actually highly encourage anyone who pro makes games just to experiment with a simple particle system because they're kind of fun to make. And it's really not like very mathy to be honest. It's actually pretty simple. I mean, there's a little stuff about vectors and stuff, but nothing, nothing beyond high school math, in my opinion. So that was fun. That was a new thing. And then you might have saw that there's some interesting transitions here. Uh, obviously, you can see how I go zoop. And now a sane person would have done was uh, made this just one screen. So you go zoop, and then a new table just slides in. It's actually different screens that you have to like instantiate and delete the old stuff. So it's an illusion that it's all on one screen because uh, the background is identical, but it's a totally new screen within the game. You know, because most games have different scenes, or like you can represent it by levels or a menu screen. So there's like menu screen, a game screen, that kind of thing, and you switch between them when you play the game. But it kind of looks like it's just one screen because everything just flies in like that. But 
yeah, I don't know. That's kind of a pointless little detail to mention. But, but yeah, uh, what I just wanted to show is like the way I get these effects. It's actually really simple by using this engine called the Universal Tween Engine. Uh, it's a Java engine for to basically interpolate between uh, to interpolate interpret. La, interpolate any uh, value of any object in your program over a given period of time. So what I mean by that is, so uh, this is the the UI here is based inside of a table, and so the, these different widgets are in that table, and this labels in that in that table. And what I do is over a given period of time, after I click this button, the uh, the x value of this table moves a little to the left and then all the way down to the right based on a formula that's in the library. So when I click the button, that table swooshes over, and then a new table is created, and then that swooshes over, giving the illusion that it's kind of on like a, a reel a little bit. And you can do that for anything. You can do that same, that's like, I'm not sure what formula it is. Like there's different ones like sine waves and uh, like a bounce effects and stuff. And you can do that not only for position, but for things like fading in and out, or slightly enlarging images and then decreasing them or anything really and that's what's so powerful about it and so you can do so much with actually so little code you can just fly around like that and it's so much f and in reality it has nothing to do with how good the game is but it kind of makes it a little more fun to to play around because it's just kind of fun to see things swoosh around and like that's actually uh, kind of an evil as well it's kind of like the to go it's kind of like the force where it's this great power but you can definitely use it for evil by disguising a kind of a shitty game with these, you know, fancy little movements, you know, fancy bits of polish and stuff. Like, the same with, like, the particle. Like, the particle trail has nothing to do with how good the game is, but it makes it look kind of cool. And when you combine it with, like, some fancy movements and transitions and stuff, it kind of looks kind of like a facsimile of a legitimate game, when in reality it is just the, mo the barest of bones of a Pong clone. So that's my little thing about <laughs> polishing games, because it's it, it's a double-edged sword. It can make a game look legitimate, but it can also make a kind of a boring game look better than it is. So why don't we go into the actual... Uh, just a couple minor things. The only point of the settings screen is to turn off the music if you want. Yeah. I'll turn off the music for now. But, uh, yeah. And credits myself, and a couple bits of music that I got off of opengameart.org. But yeah. Okay, and let's go into the actual gameplay. It's two-player, so there's no actual computer AI. Again, like, I've polished kind of a turd here, but I think it, it's, it's, so it's two-player, first to five. Now, because this is in desktop mode, there's no multi-touch, but I can play both players just by clicking each side. So let's go to, we'll do another swoosh effect. Whoop, whoop, there we go. And we have new music now. Pretty good. I like it a lot, actually. For placeholder holder music, I originally had some music from Tron Legacy, but you know, try not to use copyrighted material. Now, when you play the game, initially it just looks like boring old Pong, but after you hit it three times, now you start to get the fun trail, and then you hit it a fourth time, and now you get some screen shake. Again, using kind of the Universal Tween Engine to do that. Um, and if you're playing it on Android, instead of just in like desktop mode, you actually get a little haptic feedback as well. Again, really silly and just polished to a really boring game, but and and additionally, it just speeds up as well. Uh, and yeah, that's really the gameplay. The, the there's not really much else to say because again, it's just a basic pong clone, just as kind of a hello world for for games. But so. Last thing, I'll just let one player win. Here we go. Whoop. Player one wins. And that's the game. You start over and, you know, if you're playing with someone, assumingly you could, you have this running tally of who's won. And, uh, and yeah, so that's the game. Uh, so like I said before, this is my first game. This is built with a library called libgdx. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it's an open source Java 
framework for game making. It's actually cross-platform, so I could actually compile this for iOS or HTML5 or uh, or I guess Windows. I, I don't know if I could do Windows Phone. Maybe I don't know if they've done that yet. Um, or BlackBerry, maybe I'm not sure. But definitely iOS, Android, and and the web. But I, I didn't bother trying to make it for the web or for iOS because I don't have an iOS developer account, and it's just actually a little bit easier just to just to do an Android as one experience. But also, I don't have an I, I personally don't own an iOS device to to test on, even though I ha uh, so it's an Android exclusive, you know, <laughs> as rare as that is. Anyways, uh, yeah, so it's my first actual Java game too, because. Part of the process was actually learning how to use Java in like a real project. Um, not that different from Python. I mean, there's some crazy stuff in Java, very formal, very you know verbose as they say, but not that bad. You know, I even kind of enjoy it. It's uh, it, again kind of weird, but every language is kind of weird. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it. That's the game. Um, all the code is on GitHub, by the way. It'll be in the description, so you can check it out if you want. Um, but yeah, um, I, I don't think I'm going to go through the code line by line or anything, but if you've never tried libgdx, I recommend it. It is actually pretty powerful and also pretty easy to use. So definitely check that out if you've never. Um, last thing, here's my uh, Play Store listing, Particle Pong. Uh, again, mostly I would just wanted to to try out the, what the process of publishing an app is on the uh, on the store, uh, you know, creating an assigned APK and uploading it and getting screenshots and making uh, icons and stuff. Kind of a terrible looking icon, to be honest. But but yeah, there we go. Um, I even did a 1.01 a 1.0.1 update just a few minutes ago because there was a little bug when you finished uh, a game, but. Yeah, so that's done. That's my first Android game, first Java game, and it was a rewarding experience. Now that I've like, now I basically know most of the features of the library. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I have a pretty good idea how to use it now. My next, obviously, my next game will be a lot better. I'll actually, it'll be more of a passion project than just a, essentially a Hello World example with the library. So yeah, so check it out on the Google Play. I'll leave links to the to download it. It's free, by the way. I'm not going to charge for it. No ads either or in-app purchases. Um, and you can check out the source code, and if you want to compile it yourself on your computer, you can do that as well. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.